when you run ls-lh or just ll for detailed info on Linux files, and these first 10 characters still look like complete gibberish. Don't worry, I got you. In this video, I'm breaking it all down in a simplest way for you. So the next time you see something like this, you'll know exactly what it means and how to change it if you want to. Permissions are how Linux controls access. Basically, who can read, write, or execute files, and who can't. Every file or directory on your Linux system has an owner, a group, and then others, everyone else. And each of the three can have different levels of access to read, write, and execute files. Owner is the user who created the file. They usually have full control by default. Group is like a team. Any users in the same group might also get certain access to the file. Others means everyone else on the system who's not the owner or in the group. Okay. Now let's decode what we're seeing when we run double L. Here's a real output from my terminal, which is two directories and one file. The part we care about is the first 10 characters on each line. The first character D means it's a directory. Dash means it's a regular file. So from our list, backup and deck are directories. Brute.txt is a regular file. The next nine characters are grouped into three sets of three. Owner permissions, group permissions, and others permissions. So, for this drwxrwxrx, it means the owner, which is Kali, can read, write, execute. The group, which is again Kali, can read, write, execute. Others can read and execute only. And in dash rw dash rw dash r dash dash, owner and group can read, write. Other users can only read. Sometimes you might want to change who owns a file or directory. That's what the chown command is for, short for change owner sudo chown dugsec colon users brute.txt. This will set dugsec as the new owner and set users as the new group. Now run L again. You'll see the updated ownership. Now you might be wondering, what if I want to actually change these permissions, like lock a file down, make a script executable, or open something up to others? But first, let's look at the Linux scoring system. It's how we assign and modify permissions using numbers. Each permission is given a value. Read is set to 4, write to 2, and execute to 1. And you add them up to set permission levels. The total 7 means full access of read, write, execute. 6 means only read and write is set. 5 means only read and execute. 4 means read only. Permissions are still set in the order. Owner, group, and others. CHMOD, short for change mode, is how you modify these permissions. Example using numbers. Let's say we run chmod755 backup, and this means the owner can read, write, execute. Group can only read and execute, and others can read and execute. Example using letters. Want to make a file executable? You can also use chmod plus xbrute.txt. This adds execute permission for everyone. You can as well be more specific. chmod u-xbrute.txt removes execute for owner chmod u plus xbrute.txt adds back execute for owner. chmod g w to remove write from the group. Now that you know how permissions work, go experiment a bit. Try changing file ownership, adjusting permissions using both letters and numbers, seeing how root only files behave. And don't worry, if something breaks, you're learning. All right, that's it. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. More Linux content is on the way, so stay tuned, and as always, stay curious. See you in the next one.